Every year around August or September, I get really excited because I walk into the grocery store and I'll see all the school supplies and there's always that Crayola display and I want to buy everything and then I have to realize, wait, I already own all of these things. So today I'm going to be using the Crayola crayons, pencils, and markers that I already own and create an illustration with them. To prove that you don't need expensive art supplies, you know, to create something, I'm going to be using the cheapest supplies possible. So I've got a piece of printer paper, a regular pencil, a pack of Crayola colored pencils, some washable markers, and crayons. About a year ago, I did this exact same sort of, well, I guess challenge. I don't know, it's not really a challenge because it's just using supplies that I used to use when I was younger. So. But I did this exact same exercise about a year ago, last time that the school supplies was in the grocery store and all that stuff. So <laughs> basically the same thing. But doing it last year, it didn't turn out exactly how I would have wanted it to. And I learned a lot of things about the different ways to use these supplies that I wanted to try and, you know, apply to a new illustration and see if I can use what I learned to create something a little bit more appealing to me. And so I'm going to be redrawing that exact same picture that I did a year ago and see if I can, you know, improve upon it. If you're interested, I'll have a link in the description where you can check out that video. But I'm going to be recreating that illustration, so spoilers if you haven't seen it. <laughs> So on my last attempt to use Crayola art supplies to create an illustration, um, <laughs> I drew too small and I only used, well I basically only used markers, I also used some crayons, but uh, because I'd only used markers and they're the wide tip and I didn't have any of the fine point uh, Crayola markers, because I'm pretty sure they make those, but I don't own any, <laughs> um, I had a lot of trouble with line variation and my lines were just very very thick and bold and I wanted to combat that by drawing bigger so you'll see I'm taking up a lot more space on the page with my illustration and I'm hoping to combat that that way I also am going to be using Crayola colored pencils this time which have a much finer point than like the markers so I'm hoping to be able to get a lot more details into this illustration oh and here I'm just changing the arm because I was looking back at the reference of my original drawing and her arms are behind her back so I was like, I gotta move her arms behind her back now. <laughs> That's that. Another thing I realized I did wrong after looking back at the reference was that in the original illustration, her eyes were closed and I thought maybe it would be okay to have her eyes open, but I decided uh, I really want to try and capture the old illustration. So I decided to shut her eyes and I really enjoyed drawing shut eyes, like just a one swoosh. It's just a very simple and uh, stylized way of doing it. And I just, I don't know, I'd find that fun. <laughs> I think I've mentioned quite a few times that shoes are something that I wanted to get better at drawing and I've been practicing them and I think I'm quite happy with the way the shoes turned out in this illustration. I think I've, uh, you know, stepped it up a notch on them <laughs> and I really like the way they look like with the soles and the, the little toe of the foot and that sort of thing. <laughs> So in the two years that it's been since I drew the last <laughs> Crayola illustration, I have improved in, I suppose, many ways. But one thing that I think I still need to practice a lot and I don't feel any better at is drawing braids. I feel like at one point I kind of understood braids better than I do now. It's somehow I've just like lost some of that knowledge. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to do some more practicing with that. But basically I was just winging it for this. I was like, because I know what a braid is, like I braid my hair a lot, I, I know what a braid looks like, but for some reason drawing them, even with a reference, is extremely difficult for me. So you'll see these braids, especially near like her scalp area, is where the braid makes the least amount of sense. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> And something like some experience I have with drawing braids is that whenever I try to draw like swishy braids, the more detail I put into the braid, like the stiffer the braid looks and it looks, looks less swishy and swishy is what I'm going for specifically with this one. And so you'll see me drawing that gesture line a lot, trying to figure out the swoosh of this braid. And uh, <laughs> when I start adding in all of the actual strands of hair, it starts getting a little stiffer. So I was really trying to combat that because I just know from experience that that happens. And I think I did an okay job of combating it. Last go around, I added this like simple little red skyscraper buildings background square thing in the background. <laughs> and it was definitely an afterthought. Um, 
So this time I wanted to make sure it was more incorporated into the illustration in some way. So I used like the swoosh of her braid to like create half of a circle and then I drew the other half of the circle around behind her and then put in a bunch of skyscrapers behind her, so like a cityscape. Um, and I actually rounded that off too because in the original illustration it was kind of like the skyscrapers were just pointing in random directions. It was very like illustrative in that way. So I wanted to try and capture that again. Basically this go around I'm just trying to redo everything I did last time but with more purpose if that makes any sense. Once I was happy with the sketch I just took my kneaded eraser and erased little bits of pieces at a time and then started going in with my colored pencils. And I started with the face because my life expectancy is too short to not eat my dessert first, okay? <laughs> it's my favorite part. <laughs> It started with like the bubblegum pink color to just add some blush around the nose and the cheeks. And then I think I found like, I think it was the color slate or something. And I used that to blend outwards and try to make her face look a little less like <laughs> cloud white and a little bit more um, skin tone-y in some way. Cause in the original illustration, I didn't have any skin tone except for the blush. So <laughs> I wanted to definitely upgrade that this to go around and try to add some actual skin tones. And then for things like the nostrils and the lips, I used a darker pink color. And then for the most part, I think I used the color mahogany for like all of the lines and the eyelashes and like her eyebrows, I think. I don't know. I used the color mahogany a lot. Like I used it to outline almost everything. And funny, funny story. Um, my pack of Crayola colored pencils doesn't have a black in it. I seem to have lost it somewhere along the way or I used it up. I don't know. But uh, so I couldn't use the color black for anything unless I wanted to use the crayon or the, the marker. So for any shading that you'll see in the future that looks like black, it's actually dark brown. Just a funny story. <laughs> it looks black enough. So I, I don't really have a problem with it. And I kind of think I like it better because it's like less harsh than the color black might be like a solid black. Black. So the dark brown worked really, really well for that. <laughs> Happy little X. Aw, looking at the sketching of the city skyline. <laughs> I like it so much better this way than what it turns out. <laughs> Bummer. Where I messed up with this. <laughs> Um, so in the original illustration, the city skyline, like I said, was very much an afterthought and I kind of just threw it in there at the end and I used lots of yellows and reds. So a very analogous color scheme for that. So I thought, hey, I'll do the exact same thing this go around, which is okay. Like there's nothing wrong with that. The problem was I definitely made the skyline background sort of thing a much bigger focal point than it originally was so the fact that there's so much reds and yellows and oranges in this background color kind of distracts from what the main element of this illustration really should have been which if i had taken a step back and thought about it <laughs> i would have realized this but in the original illustration which i'll get to later which was still really really fun and i enjoyed making this part a lot was the rainbow braid so her hair is a rainbow gradient from yellow at the top so of like a natural hair color and then it goes down whoop, to green at the bottom and like that was the point of the illustration in the original go around because like I have all of these colors I have a rainbow set of markers and I want to use all of them so the point was to use all of them and create that rainbow braid but because I put so much more time and made it a larger focal point like I said this analogous orange yellow and red background it just drew so much more attention away from the braid than i would have liked and um i'm gonna i think i will photoshop i'll just edit this illustration at the end and show you what i would have liked it to look like like maybe with a more desaturated background yeah that'll be cool so stick to the end and i'll show you like what i would do i would have done differently with this illustration to make that braid stand out a bit better but I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't even gotten to that part yet. <laughs> um, but uh, here I'm just using the black magic marker and adding in the little details to her dress that were from the original illustration, you know, just trying to make it look like her. <laughs> and I was a lot smarter two years ago because I knew, oh, I wanted that braid to contrast with her outfit. And that's why I made her outfit just black and white so that there were no colors to distract from the braids like I was just talking about. So, <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we just get dumber with age. 
Oh, and then I just filled in that like lower half of the circle with red um, for the background and then added polka dots to her skirt. <laughs> that part's really fun. I enjoyed doing that. But then it looked a little too flat compared to the style of the rest of the drawing. So I'm using that dark brown like I mentioned earlier and adding some shading to the skirt. I tried to, when I added the polka dots, like think of the fabric flowing so that like the pattern's not going to be straight across. Like if it's a pattern of polka dots, like it'll ebb and flow with the fabrics. I tried to think of it that way when I was doing it. I don't know if I did a very good job, but adding the shading definitely helped with that and made it look a lot more soft and um, like an actual object in the environment. Then I just finished up the shoes or boots or whatever they are. I'm not entirely sure because in the original illustration they were just so simple. <laughs> I tried to add a little bit of details to them, but I still didn't make a decision on whether they were shoes or boots. So. <laughs> anyway, now it's time to do the braid, finally! <laughs> I started off with that mahogany colored pencil and started adding in some of like the strokes and the lines to figure out where all the hairs would be. And then I went in with yellow, so I decided to start with yellow because I wanted to start with like a most natural hair color. And then I uh, worked my way down the rainbow, down to the bottom, basically just switching out the colored pencil as I went. Sometimes I would switch out the line color, but for the most part, I think I just used that mahogany <laughs> Just because I, I liked it and it was staying sharp really well. So I was like, why 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 ruin a good thing, right? <laughs> and what I'm trying to avoid when doing this gradient is any sort of like harsh Lines where like the color just changes abruptly to another color So I'm trying to blend them out as much as possible So that means just taking the one color going a little bit past where maybe I'd want it to and then grabbing the next color and going over that section again and blending those two colors together as they slowly smoothly change from one color to the next. And you can already see here how much her braids of her hair, the yellow, orange, and the red section is just blending in with that background skyscraper stuff. Ugh. Like at this point it was too late, like there wasn't really anything I could do about it and I was noticing it so it was making me a little grumpy, but uh, Another problem I did, I guess it's not really a but, 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 I don't know. <laughs> the thing that I did that could have been helped this a little bit was maybe starting the gradient higher up. Like, I feel like somehow I spent way too much time in the oranges and the reds just in her braid. And by the time it gets to the blues and the greens, it's like at the very tip of the braid and I'd run out of room. So if I'd done this differently, I think I would have like planned out the sections a little better and like divided it more evenly, which might have helped a little bit with this orange problem, this orange red yellow problem we're having. <laughs> oh and here I'm just going in with the uh, Crayola markers and adding more definition to the braid since these colors are a lot bolder and darker they're they contrast really well with the colored pencils so I did that throughout the whole braid. And then to try to separate the uh, girl character from that background that I made uh, <laughs> I went in with the black Crayola marker and just basically surrounded her entire shape with a stroke. Um, this is just basically to separate her from it in some way, like because the colors I said were blending so much. Um, it helped a little, but here's what I would have done differently if I had thought about it from the get-go. <laughs> so here I went in Photoshop and I just adjusted the picture and I would definitely desaturate the background. So here I just went all the way and just made it a full grayscale background and I like that. And I actually made the moon still yellow that way. It's just like a little bit. Well, it's either the sun or the moon. I don't know. It's, it's the sun, isn't it? Yeah, I drew it. It's the sun. <laughs> I made the sun yellow though and uh, uh, made her head smaller just because I could because <laughs> I have this problem I draw heads too big it's it's a situation it, I, I know it's a problem so like I end up making the heads even smaller but then I take a step back and like the head's still too big so it's like wow how big was I drawing heads before <laughs> good grief Anyway, this is how it actually turned out in reality. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me play with some Crayola colored markers and pencils and things. It was a lot of fun and it's nice to just like do something for fun and it doesn't need to be too serious, you know? And this always just reminds me of being a kid again and just drawing pictures to make myself happy. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And let me know if you guys still use these markers for your drawings and what sort of things you like to make with them. Um, yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope you all have a delicious evening from the levels. Bye!